say, God is trying to tell you something. Do something. You need to hear something today. Amen? All right, we have Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Today's installment of Journey to a True You is answering the call. Father, I thank you for this word today. I ask that you give me the tongue, the pen of a ready writer, that you let me say everything that needs to be said. That you let me say it with razor sharp clarity. That you help me to divide rightly the word of truth. That you make it real to every person. And that you cause them to know Lord, what is the word of God to them. And I pray, God, that the word of God will be liberated to them. And that they should know the truth. And the truth should make them free in every arena of their life. I pray, Lord, that everyone would walk out of this room affirmed in the uniqueness that is them. And assure God that you are amening the creation that you placed on the planet when you made them. And all their faults and all their failures and all their eccentricities and all their weirdness and all their kookiness and all their good things and all their talents. I pray, Lord, that they would embrace the wonder that is them. That they would not be holding to some kind of man's image for them. Some kind of man's image of perfection for them. They would embrace God, the true identity that you called them to be. In Jesus. In Jesus. Amen. I can't say enough about the true identity, but what I believe about all of you here today is that you have a true identity. Um, there's a true you. And in the same way, superheroes always want to hide their true identity. You know. Uh, and it's Superman doesn't want you to know he's Clark Kent. Right? That's a true identity. Actually, the opposite's true. He's really Superman. And Clark Kent didn't want you to know he's Superman. Well, what I believe about you today is, is you've been walking around as Clark Kent on Lois Lane, but there's a Superman and a Supergirl on the side of you, and that is the true you. Amen. Okay. So this is all from the lens of not putting you down. We're making you feel bad about what you did. Can I get a witness in this house? Uh, making you, I mean, how many have ever been in a service with you? They preach sin so uh, evil and hell so hot that you could feel the flames. I mean, they couldn't open the altar soon enough. You had to get down there and were like scraping to get up there. Law of saving and building. And the truth is, is, we do have a hole in our life, we do have needs. But I'm not saying, I want to build you up today. I, want to, I don't want to tell you how bad you are. I want to tell you how wonderful you are because God made you. Can I get a witness in the house? How many think that's a little bit all right? How many have been told about how bad you are all your life? Some of us that have, had, that have or have had bad kids, we know. We're like, I'm going to tear you up. You little hellion. <laughs> Christian folks, I remember my mom, she was a saint. But she's like, I'm going to knock your head off. <laughs> that ain't right, is it? So we get this mental image about how we're so bad. And we want to see ourselves as good. Because how you see yourself is how you are. Amen. If you see yourself the way Daddy said you were, or Mama said you were, you're just a little hell, you know, bad. Then you're going to be bad. But if you see yourself as good, you may make mistakes, but you're going to be good. All right? So that's where I'm going with this. Before you can actually uh, join in the journey to the true you, you have to answer the call. I want you to say that. Say, answer the call. Say it again. I want you to say this. I'll say, God is not on your phone number. So don't let it go to voicemail. Answer the call. Five words. First word is here. I say here. The scripture says, And the Lord had said to Abel. The Lord had said. I firmly believe, and I say this on a regular basis, 
God is trying to tell you something. I don't believe that God got done talking when he finished with Revelation. I believe I don't believe the Bible is a done deal. I believe that we are written, living epistles, uh, written of all, read of all men. Amen. God is still working on the Bible. The Bible is me. Amen. God ain't got, got done talking. The problem is, is a lot of people have got done listening. And here's the problem. Here's the big problem. Abraham, Abel was was Abraham. It was Abel. Now I'm talking about journey to a true you. He was Clark Kent as Abel, but he was fixing to be Superman as Abraham. Can I get a, a witness in the house? He was moving on to a journey to something better than he was before. And I'm here to tell you today that you are all six billion dollar men and women. You we can build it. We can make it stronger, faster, better than it was before. Amen. Amen. So Abel, he said to Abel. Abram did not have television, he did not have an iPod, he did not have an iPad, he did not have anything competing for the voice of God. And yet we walk, the radio is always on. How many house could say the television is always on and the problem with cable TV or direct TV is there's always something on? Right? I'm not preaching against TV, don't get nervous. Some of y'all are probably thinking you're going to have to put it back in the closet. I promise you. You won't have to put it back in the closet. You'll leave it right out. But you need to turn it off every once in a while. You can't hear God if you've got voices that are not God talking to you all the time. And look, as much as it could be the radio, the TV, the internet competing for your comp uh, competing for the voice of God, it could be those negative voices that speak negative, that speak adverse to what God has already said. It might be a friend, it might be a loved one, that whenever you get on the phone, they're saying something that negates what God has spoken down into the tabernacle of your soul. But what you know to be true about you, and then something comes that says the opposite. You've got to open your ears to hear. The Bible says that him that has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Present tense and to the church. When I say God is trying to tell you something, I don't mean He's trying to talk to you yesterday. I mean right here, right now. The Spirit of the Lord is alive and well. And is trying to speak to us. He's trying to speak to you through the skinny white boy here today. God is trying to tell us something. And we have to hear. We have to hear. If you're going to answer the call, you've got to hear the call. This happens to me all the time. I always have my phone in my pocket. And I'll be somewhere and it rings and I don't hear it. I can't answer it if I don't if I don't hear it. And here's what's true more than y'all are gonna be mad at me a little bit because somebody's called me this week and I didn't pick up. A lot of times I can't pick up. With what I do, I can't pick up. But sometimes I just don't want to answer it. <laughs> I hear it, but I ain't picking it up. That's where some of us, some of us young people. God has got your number. He has got a call for you. He's got something, a purpose, and a plan for you. And right now, you don't want to hear it. I'm telling you, it's in your best interest to hear God yes. at a young age. Carter, Andrew, and it's in your best interest to hear God at a young age. And His sheep know His voice. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want you just to take a second. Just take a second. Complete silence in the room. And I want you to practice. Trying to hear the voice of the Lord. Trying to hear God speak to you. Close your eyes for Okay. Now I'm going to tell you the second word to answer the call is move. Everybody say move. Somebody going not like this one. The Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country from your family. And your father says, there's always movement involved in a journey. They say if you feel like you're going somewhere and you're not moving, you're only hitting yourself. If you're on a journey, you're moving. Say amen. amen. Now, I hope nobody's going to move from the geographical from a sweet, sweet long view. We just love long view. Long view is wonderful. All the long view. Or film work folks. Say Amen. Beautiful East Texas, it's just wonderful, pine trees, it's a great place to be. It's hot right now, but feel cool off, it's going to be great. But just because you're not moving from your geographical location, you're not moving from your, your neighborhood or your trailer or your apartment or your house, doesn't mean that you should be sedentary, that you should be not moving. 
You need to be in perpetual motion. Um, I heard the commercial says the body that's in motion stays in motion. And so when people quit moving, they start getting sedentary, that's when old Arthur starts to creep in. That's so that you all know, those of us that have gotten a little longer in the tooth, you know, if we, if we couldn't do a certain types of exercises, we started to do an exercise, and that exercise doesn't want to happen. And so movement has to be involved in a journey. And a journey to, a, to get to the true you, you're going to have to move. Now, what am I saying today? The word to Abram was get out of your country, get out of the place where you dwell. For some of us, some of us to get to a true us, it's going to mean that we need to move out of the place where we dwell. That might mean that the place where we think, the place where we reside, the place that we've always been, the television shows that we always watch, the radio stations that we are. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here today. What we've always done before, you've got to move from that to get to a true you. I'm talking to somebody. It's said from your father's house. Some of y'all got to get away from your family. They're crazy. They're nuts. They're nuts. God gave us a house of God. I've got family sitting here together. Don't look at them. Okay? They don't know. They don't know. I'm talking about you. And then Ben Miller said it's on from a distance. And some, of, some of us have to love our families from a distance. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to step in and I'm just going to wipe my shoe off and keep going. From your family or from whoever. Everybody say move. It might be moving from what? It might be moving from where? And it might be moving from who? But whatever it is for you to get to the you, true you, to answer the call, there has to be movement involved. And let me just say this too. While I'm here, everything might be right. Your family might be great. Um, job may be good. You come to the house of the Lord. You worship the Lord. you got got a little money, you feel well in your body, everything is beautiful in its own way, you still have got to move. You cannot reside in a solitary place, in a sedentary place, and think that it's always going to be there. At some point, the brook is going to dry up. At some point, it's not going to be the way that it was. Everything changes. Can I get a witness from somebody who's lived today to know that things don't always stay the same, and for you to move and to, to to get to this place of answering the call to the true you, you, there has to be movement involved. And you have to involve yourself in that. Abram couldn't stay in his own country where they always knew him as little Abram. You, you remember the promise to Abram. It was, I will make you the father of many nations. <clears throat> and up until this point, he had a beautiful wife who couldn't have babies. And in his hometown and in his family... It was all poor Abram married that old woman and she ain't ever going to have a baby. Here she is all old now. And it's never going to happen. He had to get away from that and get out of doubt and move into faith to get to the place where it could happen. What God said to you can't happen to some of us where we are. And so we got to move. we got to move. I want you to look at somebody and say, I'm going to move to where it's going to happen. She moved where the grass is green. Amen. Move, 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 move. Amen. Number three, the third word. You got two words. Tell me what they are. Number one. Number two. Move. move. Number three is see. Everybody see. It says see. Now, I'm not speaking of the Spanish word for yes. That's not. I'm speaking of the English word. S-E-E. -E. God said to Abram, get out of your country. Get out from your family. Get out from your father's house to a land that I will what? Show you. Show you. God wants you to see something. God wants you to see something. God made us visual people. For most of us, we have two eyes in our head to see. And it's a physical uh, resemblance of something that God wants to happen for you in a spiritual kind of way. Get an amen. Uh, God wants you to see past the physical. And the scripture says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God sees past it. God's got an x-ray vision. He can look right in and see the heart. He can see past all the actions and see into the motives. Thank God for that. Thank God for that, that he can see your heart. But that all would also make us a little bit trepidatious. Like, oh, he can see the, he can see why I did what I did. He can see why I'm acting like I'm acting. 
So he sees the good and the bad of you, kind of like Santa Claus. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you've been bad or good. Amen? Okay, so God has created us to see. And this God is a God that takes pleasure in revelation. I'm about to say revelation. This is where I'm going with this word see, revelation. God has revealed to his church who he is. It's a revelation. You may have been born into the right home and may have been raised right and, and brought to church and they taught you who Jesus was. But to really see for yourself who he is, God has to reveal it. But God takes pleasure in revealing it. And, and the good thing about that is, is many are called. This calling that I'm talking about answering comes to everybody on the planet. Seven billion people on the planet, everybody gets a call. But it said many are called and few are chosen. So God didn't just call you. God has chosen you to seek. He's chosen you to reveal. He chose 12 people. And he, and he spoke to the people in parables. And then behind the scenes he told the 12 what the parables meant. Because he chose them to reveal it to them. And so we have been chosen to seek. But we'll never get to the true us unless we open our eyes and see what God is trying to show us. He had to be willing to see. He had to be willing to move, to go to where God could show him something. And, and this is the interesting about this. When God spoke to Moses, when God gave Moses the call and said, get out, Moses did not know where he's going. And a lot of us won't move because we can't see where we're going to end up if we start moving. But God says, if you go, I'll show you. If you'll move, I'll show you. I'll reveal it to you. In the, in the action of your faith towards the journey of a true you, God will show you in the meantime of what you're becoming. You say, well, I, I don't know, especially young people. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. I don't know, um, you know, how my life is going to end up. I don't even know. How many have ever not known what you want? I experience this on a regular basis when it comes to eating. I don't know what I want, so I don't know where I want to go. And then after I get to the restaurant, I don't know what I want off the menu. How many are there? You just don't know. But God said, on this journey to a true you in answering the call, that He'll show it to you. It'll be revealed to you. It may not happen today, but it sure enough will happen. How many believe that God is a revealer? Amen. He is a revealer. The whole thing about the manifestation of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, was that God wanted to reveal Himself to mankind. He wanted to come in a flesh suit to show man, to show the world, this is how I am. He wanted people to see. And God is not trying to blind it from you. He's not trying to hide it from you. But in the same way He gave you two eyes that you can close, the people of God on your journey in answering the call can close your eyes to what God wants you to see. For some of us on this journey in answering the call, God wants us to see someone in need. He wants us to see a, a country that needs Jesus. He wants us to see uh, an area that He wants us to minister in. But we don't have the time or the patience or the energy, we don't, or the resource, we don't want to do it. Amen. We got quiet in the sophisticated church this morning, but I know it's right. I know it's right. To answer a call, a true call. Look, this call is not, I'm not trying to call you to preach. I'm not trying to call everybody into the ministry. But I am trying to call everybody into a ministry. Everybody's called to do something. Everybody's called to be something. And when you make movements toward it, God will cause you to see it. Amen. I've only got two more. So if you've got three words, don't get quiet on me. Everybody say number one is Here. Here. number two. Ooh. Number three. Here. Number four is allow. Everybody say allow. I love the phrase, let go and let God. How many believe God's got all power? We said miracle signs and wonders, miracle signs and wonders. Let it rain. There's some things that we can't do. But God can do anything. And when you get in, in corroboration, when you get in agreement with the Spirit of the Lord, there is no telling what you'll be road telling. Number four, allow the Bible. The Bible says that I read, it says, uh, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. God was saying, look, 
There's some things that you're not going to be able to do. Abram was an old man. He wasn't going to get to Abraham by himself. There was going to have to have a miracle sign and wonder transpire into what God had sent. And so it is with all of us to answer a call. There is something supernatural that needs to proceed from nobody but Jesus. You can't make it happen in and of yourself. But God, who sits high, looks low, has got the hairs on your head numbered, and He knows how to make things happen. Amen. We have to allow. Look at your say, you have to allow God. Allow God. This right here. Could be. I mean, people probably would say, Abram is kind of crazy. He's leaving the fold. He's leaving the family's nest. He's, he doesn't even know where he's going. And he hears God telling him he's going to make him a great nation, and he doesn't even have any children. I'm telling you, what God wants to do for you will blow the minds of everyone that knows you. When you step into the true you, when you step into the call that God has for you, it's way past what you can do in your natural realm. I know the natural gifts that God has given you will, will complement, coordinate, and help God do what He does. But the truth is, is what He really wants to do is so far past you that all you can do to answer the call is allow it to happen. I want you all to say this today. I, say, I want you to say, Lord, I allow everything to come to me that you have for me. Say it one more time. I allow. There's something so peaceful and so wonderful about just letting God. Letting Him. Letting Him. Yielding to the Lord. Just throwing your hands up as a sign of surrender. Of letting him make you a great nation. Of letting him fight your battles. Somebody can do that. Trying to fight the battles for yourself. And God says, I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to make your man great. I'm going to make life church a thriving, spirit filled community that is absolutely affecting the area around us and causing it to transform glory to glory. Maybe a little by a little. But come back in 20 years and see what's around us. He's going to All I have to do is let him. We put so much on ourselves. We, we think we have to make everything happen. For, for those dads that shoulder the responsibility of a household of single moms, you have so much on you. Sometimes you think you have to do it all. There's some things that God just says, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do this for you. Part of your journey is seeing God affect and work miracles. Um, for, for people that do that, let me just tell you, you're sitting in a sanctuary in a building that God gave us. He just flat out gave us. He, and he gave us the means to renovate it. When we got this building, they did look like this. So, those of y'all that have been along for the journey from the community center to here, it's absolutely been God orchestrating it. Pulling behind the scenes, pulling strings, giving us favor where we need it. And some things I have been completely, and I don't give me a hammer, I will put a hole in it. But God, me allowing God to bring about. Just what you're sitting in right now. It's just a little example. I promise you, you can think back over the course of your life and you can look at things that you know nobody but God did that. And God hasn't got done doing things for you. So answer the call and let Him do it. I want you to look at your name one more time and say, Miracle sign for what that is. <laughs> Last one. That's one. Number five, fifth word, and answer the call is simply two letter word, B. Everybody say B. B. Say it again. B. B. God spoke to Abram on this journey from being Abram to Abraham, the father of the faithful, the father of many nations. His descendants will be like the sands of the sea or the stars of the sky. This outlandish promise that Abram of course, you know, took it to his own hands. 
and had a, uh, a child out of wedlock with Hagar, Ishmael, father of the uh, Ishmaelites, which became basically what we know as modern day Islam, Muslims. Abraham made a mess. And we're still dealing with it. You don't see that? Sometimes we get involved in our own thing and we make a mess. So, but as you can see, the, the people of the world looked at Abraham, the Christians, the Jews, and the, the uh, Muslims, all looked at Abraham as the father of faith. So God fulfilled his word to Abraham. And in this journey of starts and stops and mistakes, and he told some lies. You all know the whole journey of Abraham, which was filled with all kinds of mess. <laughs> how many his life has been filled with mess? I mean, honestly, how many can say you've got you've got some stuff in your you you had to, to to go get some stuff out of the city out of Sodom and Gomorrah. You had to, you had to go uh, get somebody out of jail. <laughs> I mean, just trouble. He has some trouble in his life. So, but he gets to this place, and God says, when I get you there, this great nation, he says, you're going to be blessed. I'm, I'm talking about a greater state of being. And we talk a lot about becoming, because we want to become more like Jesus, more like God. Amen? But what about this? What about on this journey to a true me, when I answer the call, God has just called me to be. All the, the good that is me and all the, the bad that is me, all, all the sum total of what is standing in front of you, all five feet, ten inches of me, God has just called me to be. And he's called this to be a blessing. He's called to be a blessing. Part of answering the call is just being to who you are. Bela, who you are. Vicky, who you are is a who you are is more of a blessing to someone than anyone else could be. And we have to be willing to be that to someone. What happens in our life is we get beat up. We get mistreated, we get cheated, we get lied on, we get talked about, we get scandalized, we get slandered. If I got anybody in the room, he's ever been to me. And we decide we don't want to trust people. And when we get to that stage and that place in our life, then we can't answer the call of be. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. God didn't call Life Church into being in this location for us to just come in, and sing a few songs, and get a word from the Lord, and go home. God has called this place to be a blessing, to be a blessing, to be a blessing to those that come in, and to be a blessing to those who never will. God has called this church to be the kind of church that anybody can come to. I don't care how crazy they look. We've been called to be a blessing. How many have been welcomed into the presence of the Lord and are thankful to everything that God, ever thankful for everything that God has done? And you want to answer the call of God in your life. And you believe that if God is no respecter of persons, then on the journey from Abram to being Abraham, there is a journey from Heather, I don't know what your name would be, Heatherham. <laughs> Amy Ham. There is a journey from where you are to the place of true identity, true you. And it starts with answering a call. So make this plan for today. I'm not trying to get anybody to go on the mission field to, to India. God calls you to do that, though. <coughs> this word applies to that, that you need to make preparation. I'll take a good amen. amen. Uh, but it could be that God is just calling you to be a, a, a wonderful housewife and mother and soccer mom. 
It's like I'm the Holy Ghost. Somebody in your life is going to need to know God. Amen. Bow your heads in your heart. Father, I thank you for your word today. I believe that it's a word from you. But God, I can, I can talk about answering the call, but I know it's an individual I know it's an individual response, God, that they all have to have. They all have to decide they're going to do it. I'm asking, Lord, in your name right now, that you give them the mind and the capacity and the open heart to receive your word today, God, to know what it is saying to them specifically to them, Lord. Saying to them, God, I'm asking, God, that you talk to each individual heart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. In your own way. In your own way. Will you just talk to God just for a moment? Maybe you can say something to Jesus like, Lord, I answer your call. Or I will answer your call. I will hear. I will believe.